Okay guys, this is our new uh, hydrogen booster installation in the back of the car. It's uh, just a trial one at the moment, that's why it looks a bit not permanent. The water bottle for a tank. <laughs> but it works well, and um, I've put it on the corner of the boot because we're going somewhere. There's all the wiring running down through the, to the front of the car, gas tube and electrical wiring. So, uh, as I said, it's temporary, so it's just for the trial. Going on a trip to Bundaberg, which is a fair drive, four or five hour drive. That's the control box in the driver's seat. Um, that one switches the fans on and off. That one switches, the middle one switches the uh, hydrogen cells. They're all fused up with a 30 amp relay in there. And um, the wiring goes through the, you had to drill a couple of holes in the firewall to get it through, but there was space, that's good. And this is the engine bay with the wiring going to the battery. It's a 5 litre V8 race tuned engine um, on a Ford TL50. It's a limited edition car. This is the breaker. Um, it's the attachment to the positive, obviously. And the wiring goes all the way around to the top. Um, the small wiring you see is for the fans because it doesn't need huge current. Um, that black tube I'm pointing out now is the gas. Um, hosed into the air intake. We've put it before the mass airflow sensor so that when the computer reads the oxygen levels it's there from the beginning so this way hopefully we don't have to use an EFI and uh, it's a cold air induction for it. Um, so that's the engine and in, you know just idling it seems fine. It's a 130 amp uh, alternator bolted on there so there's plenty of juice for it. Underneath the alarm there is where we drill the hole in the firewall to go straight through. So what I'll do now is I think I'll uh, show you around there again. I'll turn it on in a sec. Just to show you the bubble flow on that. Because it is in the back of the car it does take a good 30 seconds or so for the gas to reach the engine. And uh, I'll turn the unit on just so you can see it bubbling away. But the top switch doesn't do anything, it's not wide. We were going to have a little water flow pump, but we didn't need it. So the tube on the left is the gas coming out of the cells, and the tube on the right is the electrolyte flow back into the cells, so it acts like a little pump. And I know I've just turned it on, so it's not bubbling huge, but it does get a fairly okay amount of output. I measured it at 15 amps. We got one liter in a minute twenty, um, but it was low voltage for that test. It was down to about nine, ten volts. So I haven't tested it at proper car voltage, um, especially when it's running, you know, like thirteen point eight volts or whatever. So that's the system. The trip to Bundaberg's a fair drive away, so it should be good. Um, Hopefully we get some decent mileage. On the highway this car usually gets well, maybe 600 kilometers out of a tank if you're driving like a grandma. Okay, this is the CAD drawing I did of the permanent housing for the uh, uh, hydrogen cells, electrolyzer cells and the water tank. And um, it's got all its cooling in there, so it's got fans blowing directly onto the cells and blowing out. Um, this will be stored in the boot pretty much where the trial unit is at the moment. It's all measured up to fit. Um, but this will be more permanent, so it's just... every All the connections are in-house. It'll have uh, little attachment plugs for the wiring to go into the back. It's all disconnectable, so you can just remove it if you need to. Um, the fuel tank, water tank at the top, you can see it has baffles in it. That's to stop the uh, flow of water when you're driving from splashing up into the gas outlet nozzle. Um, what else? There's a baffle at the top as well to really help reduce that. And it's slightly angled forward so the gas has to go to that top point. And it's the only place you can get out. Um, so that's what we're getting made up. It's all done with acrylic, 6mm acrylic, so it's pretty strong. Um, and because there's not much room in the engine bay on that car, on this car, it's um, preferable to have it in the boot. So when it is permanently installed, all the wiring 
gas strips will be run underneath the car, not through it, like it is at the moment. That looks a bit dodgy. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's that. This is a test I did for the baffles concept in the water tank. Um, there's three of them in there. Uh, by moving it, rocking it forward and back, simulates acceleration and stuff. Um, probably not very well, but it's as good as I can do with one hand. When I didn't have the camera, it was really shaking and it was good. Um, so that one's got eight. The middle one has four holes and the front one has five holes. And I think the front one will be the best, that one there, because um, it just seems to have less movement inside it of water, less splashing about in those, that compartment that's adjoined to it. Um, could also be because there's a smaller distance between it. But it seems to work very well, so that's the one I'm going with. So that's the pattern I've done in the CAD drawing. So I hope it all works. Cheers. Okay.